morning and happy Easter. We're so glad that you could join us for worship on this Easter morning, 2021. I'm glad that we have traveled so far since one year ago when we were worshiping at my dining room table for Easter. So thank you for being here and for joining us in our digital sanctuary for the celebration of resurrection and hope. We've got a service filled with beautiful music, the wonderful good news that Jesus Christ is risen, and we hope that all of that will give you the power and hope in believing that you can carry forward into the coming weeks. And now join with us as we sing one of our favorite Easter hymns, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Please join with me now in our traditional Easter proclamation, and I invite you to declare this with as much volume and enthusiasm as you possibly can there in your homes. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you. Risen Christ, 
for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So our trusty props master this morning, John Leister, is going to help me with a piece of what we'll use for the children's message. So some of you may recognize this as the wire cross that we have used for many Easter's to build a cross made of flowers. And so I have w here with me one flower. What we would often do is, you know, each person would have their own flower to stick in one of the holes here in the wire. As I look at this one flower, it is so beautiful. This one happens to be a kind of pinkish purple. We might call it magenta if we're being fancy. And it's just so beautiful on its own. But if I stick it in here, just like that, that doesn't make a very good flower across, does it? Just kind of one flower hanging out there in the wire netting. I think a lot about how much that flower cross that we sometimes put together represents the power of each of us individually coming together to form something more beautiful. So there'll be a picture on your screen that will show you a picture of one of our flower crosses from a past Easter. Notice how all of those flowers come together, different colors, different kinds of flowers, and with all of them stuck together onto the cross, it forms something so beautiful. And it's important that each flower is unique, its own color, its own identity, and that all of them together make something even more beautiful. And I think that's a good reminder for us on this Easter morning, that each of us brings something unique to this place that we call church, what we sometimes call the body of Christ. And by joining together each of those unique and beautiful people that we are of all different kinds, all different colors, all different talents, all different gifts, all different things to offer, that when we bring them together, there's something more amazing than when we remain separate. An individual. So that's what I think about when I look at that flower cross from a couple of Easter's ago. I think about how wonderful it is that we can all give what we can to make something beautiful as the body of Christ. And that's true even when we can't physically be together. We can still be working together to share the love that God has first shared with us. So in thanksgiving for that love and that joy and that togetherness, let's pray now. Let's put our hands together and let's talk to God.
Dear God, we thank you for making us each into a beautiful flower all on our own. And we thank you for bringing us together into something more complete and more beautiful. Hold us in your love. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to pass it off to Calder now to share our first reading. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2 and 14 through 24. It will be read responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to the 16th chapter of St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James 
and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Holy God, enfold us in your resurrection hope this day. Fill us with your spirit. Help us never to take this story for granted, but help us to see it with new eyes and new hearts this morning. We pray this in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. The women were focused on practical matters, buying the right combination of spices to anoint the body, getting up early in the morning, worrying about how they were going to roll that stone away. That's a kind of faith in and of itself, attending to what has to be done, even if you're not sure how to remove the obstacles in your path. But you get up early in the morning and you do the next task that's in front of you because it's all you know to do. It's all you can do. We've done so much of that this past year. We've dealt with so many practical matters. We figured out Zoom. We learned to wear masks. We washed our hands again and again. We navigated grocery stores that were not designed for social distancing. We figured out how to get vaccine appointments. We did online school, online work, online worship, online everything. It's what we do when we're not sure what else to do. We focus on the practical matters. There was a meme that circulated early in the pandemic, and I actually taped it on my wall for several weeks because I found it helpful. It sorted things into two categories, things I can control and things I cannot control. Things I cannot control <laughs> included the amount of toilet paper in the store, the actions of others, predicting what will happen, how long this will last. Things I can control, which the graphic encouraged me to focus on, included turning off the news, my own social distancing, finding things to do at home, my kindness and grace. I imagine a version of this same diagram for the women headed to the tomb as the sun rises. They cannot control the violent death of their beloved friend and teacher. They cannot control their grief. They can control getting the spices, getting up early, getting to the graveyard to anoint the body. And that's when everything is thrown into turmoil. They show up and nothing that they thought was in their control actually is. The big stone has been rolled away, but there's nothing to anoint. No body. No sign of Jesus anywhere. 
The young man dressed in the white robe says the right things. Do not be alarmed. Jesus is not here. He's been raised. But it's so confusing. And of course, the one thing that in this moment is within their control to do, to go and tell the others, they don't do. They're afraid. They're filled with terror and amazement. Other writers have tried to add a happy, more tidy kind of ending to the Gospel of Mark. But scholars agree that the original conclusion is what we heard this morning. I've always kind of loved that. I've loved this messy, open-ended ending, but I especially love it this year. Because this account of resurrection, it is fitting for the time we are in. We understand what it feels like not to get the ending that we expect. We know what it feels like to keep searching for hope in the midst of confusion. The women feel both terror and amazement. And so do we. We are many centuries beyond that moment in the empty tomb, and yet we feel that strange mix of emotions, terror, and amazement. We're terrified that things might never go back to normal. We're amazed at what we used to consider normal. We're terrified that we've forgotten to be how to be around other people. We're amazed by the time we've had with our closest people. We're terrified that the variants of the virus will outpace the vaccine. We're amazed how quickly the vaccines have been developed. We're terrified that this year might change us forever. We're terrified that it won't change us at all. We're amazed that we've been able to adapt. We're amazed that we're still here. We, like the women at the tomb, have come to realize that we can control much less than we thought we could. We hold so many things swirling in our hearts that we don't know how we can contain it all. Confusion and curiosity, despair and hope, grief and love. It's all there and it's all messy and it's what makes us human. We can only hold it with and for one another and trust that God is with us as we live it. Because when you can't control much of anything, you have to focus on what you know. What we know is that eventually the women told someone. That's why we have this story at the heart of our faith. We know that God is a God who brings life out of death, peace out of chaos, justice out of oppression, promise out of a pandemic. We know that nothing can prevail against a God who makes resurrection possible. We know that it's our turn to add our part to the story, to go and tell what God has done, even if our voices are shaking with terror and amazement. There's an Easter blessing by Jan Richardson that I love. And it seems to me to be addressed both to those women standing in the empty tomb and also addressed to us standing in this moment. So as I read it, I want you to imagine it speaking both to the women as well as speaking to you. Scene, a blessing for Easter Day. You had not imagined that something so empty could fill you to overflowing. And now you carry the knowledge like an awful treasure or like a child that roots itself beneath your heart. How the emptiness will bear forth a new world that you cannot fathom, but on whose edge you stand. So why do you linger? 
you have seen. And so you are already blessed. You have been seen. And so you are the blessing. There is no other word that you need. There is simply to go and tell. There is simply to begin. She's right. We stand on the edge of a new world, one we can't yet fathom. What will be our story of this time? What will be our story of faith? How will we carry that blessing into the next season? It's time to go and tell. It's time to begin. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In a moment, we'll have the time for the gathering of our offering. And much like I was telling the kids about the flower cross, it takes the combination of all of our financial contributions in order to carry out the mission and ministry of this place. So thank you for your generosity this week in, in supporting what we do together as a community. We'll begin by sharing the peace, and then we'll have the time of the offering. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Please share that peace with one another. This morning we have a special treat as one of our anthems. We'll be sharing with you this video of Jesus Christ is Risen Today. It's put together by virtue of the tremendous efforts of our own Carol Beadle and the wonderful leadership of the Association of Lutheran Church Musicians who have brought together both vocalists and instrumentalists from throughout the country. So look closely. I think you might see some familiar faces in this video, especially on one of the verses. So enjoy.
Thank you so much to our own musicians who participated in that. And again, thank you to ALCM for making that possible. We'll continue now with the offering prayer. God of love, receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we offer the prayers of the people, the response to each petition is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. We pray for all on our prayer list and for those we name now, either silently or aloud. A 
assure them of your promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming, your mercy endures forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's have a few quick announcements. Mostly tremendous thanks. I'm so overwhelmed with gratitude for all who made this morning's service possible. I especially want to give a shout out to Brian and Austin Dempsey for tagging in as our tech team at the last minute. We're so grateful for their help. Thank you to Carolyn and to Calder for tag teaming both as assisting ministers and as our song leaders today. Uh, thank you to Tim and Mark and John for their contributions of music that are so um, vital to our celebration of Easter. And indeed, thank you to all of our virtual choir members who offered their video contributions to the virtual anthem. I hold a special word of thanks for Linda and for Carol, who throughout this past year, but especially in this lead up to a very different kind of Holy Week and Easter, have been so faithful and creative and hardworking to help us get ready for these holy days. So I'm in deep gratitude and a sense of indebtedness to everyone who has contributed their individual flowers to the flower cross that we have put together today. And now as one additional treat this morning, we have a video from an Easter of yesteryear. It's one of our favorite Easter anthems. He is not here. And it is both a beautiful connection to this morning's gospel from Mark and also a way to remind us that a different day is on the horizon and we'll be able to be back together before we know it. So enjoy, he is not here. The angels go to the women, do not be
special word of thanks to Elizabeth Stewart, who always knocks, knocks that solo out of the ballpark, so to speak. So thank you, Elizabeth, for your many gifts to us. And now receive this Easter blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. And now sing along with us on Thine is the Glory. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs> 